Well, every time you turn on the news, it feels like the clock is ticking. Headline after headline seems more and more like a scene from the book of Revelation than the latest news coverage. So how close are we to mankind's final chapter? Well, today we're going to talk about that and more. But first, joining me around the table is Kendra Kelly Dean. How are hey. you? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> How are you? These shows, Johnny always asks me to be on these shows. That's right. But I, it's just... Um, you love being on I these do. shows. I yeah. do. I do love being on these shows. And they're, they are full of information. And I think that you have to have information. Yeah. Even though these are heavy topics, and you're sitting going, wait, what? This is about to happen? Kind of thing. <laughs> I always, I, I always kind of go in nervous, but then when the show's over, I leave thinking, okay, I've got work to do. Yeah. yeah. And it's time to Motivation. get out there. But yeah, mm -hmm. fulfill that purpose and get out there and do what needs That's to be good. done to get people to Jesus. You Amen. Know? Amen. Rebecca Weiss, welcome. Hey. This is good today. This is great. <laughs> you know, um, do you remember John Paul Jackson always talking about that God picked this time. special time and season? Yeah. For all of us to be alive, yeah. and he would equip us for this time and season yeah. to do what we needed and to do. And for this one to be alive, yes. glad we're sliding him in there. <laughs> Are you glad you got this slide, little munchkin, in there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great, and I. It keeps going over and over my head. Signs of the time are everywhere. Yeah. You know, the yes. redemption draweth near, draweth nigh. So, wow. Do you remember that song we used to sing? I wish we'd all been ready. ready. I'm telling but you, but I'll the say show. these two are we're already. <laughs> we're ready. So, welcome back, our dear, dear friend Jimmy Evans. Always glad to have you on Thank the you. table. Good to be here. Thank this you. is it's a serious topic, and you know it's important that we talk about signs in the heavens, rumors of war, domestic unrest, the chaos of today seems to be spiraling out of control and we have seen more signs of the end times in our generation than any mm -hmm. generation yeah. before us. So is there anything else that needs to come to pass before Christ returns or are we already standing at the edge of human history? Mm -hmm. So um, let's start right now. We're doing the series on last things. Mm -hmm. We're talking about last things before the return mm -hmm. of Christ. Yeah. It, what interested me one day, and I was just praying about all the things that are happening in the world, what interested me are how many last things that are happening right now, mm -hmm. okay? Or could be the last things, but, the, but they're pretty glaring. And there's gonna be a series of these programs. We're gonna talk about a lot of them. But the first one, now this is extra biblical, and I wanna say that right up front. When something is in the Bible, it's just true. I'm very, you know, very strong about it. Now, this is something. Uh, it's the last, it, it, the last pope. Okay, um, there is the prophecy of the popes, which has been in circulation since the 16th century. It was published in um, in 1595 by a Benedictine monk Arnold Wyan. Um, but he says that they came from Saint Malachy, and he was the Archbishop of Ireland mm -hmm. during the 12th century. And he was summoned to the Vatican uh, by Pope Innocent II. And he traveled from Ireland through the mainland of Europe down through Italy. And what he saw was poverty, uh, people really miserable, all kinds mm -hmm. of problems. And then he got to the Vatican yeah. and he saw the opulence of the mm -hmm. popes and the bishops and cardinals and the way wow. that they were living. Wow. And it really grieved his heart. Well, according to the story, he got a vision of the next popes until the last pope, okay? Wow. And he wrote it down. Uh, every, all, each pope, the 112 popes, had a little cryptic wow. Latin uh, verse next to it or phrase. Mm -hmm. And the, the longest one is about the last pope, and I'll read that here in just a little bit, yeah. okay? So he wow. said, according to the prophecy of the popes, the prophecies of St. Malachi, there will be 112 popes, uh, beginning with Pope Celestine. He just said from Innocent II until the very last pope, there's going to be 112. Okay, so he didn't say what the year would be when the 112th came. He just said there would be 112. And you say, well, how many have there been? Pope Francis is 112. Wow. Okay, and so, how many was he right on? Uh, uh, the, the little phrases he wrote? Yeah, yeah. Well, him. the criticism of the prophecy of the popes that uh, some people say and some Catholic people say is they were more accurate before it was published than after it was published. But I'm going to give you an example here in just a minute of how accurate it is. But first of all, I want to say this. So <clears throat> I believe we're at the end. Okay, so he wrote this. Maybe it's inspired, maybe it's not. Okay, mm -hmm. so I believe that we're at the end. How interesting that there has been an average of an 11-year term for each pope of the 112. Oh, wow. since, since these were written wow. until now, mm -hmm. an average of 11 years. So it brings us to the end, okay? 
But what if it had been an average of 10? Mm. It wouldn't have worked. What if it had been an average of 12? Oh. And remember, the prior pope was the first pope in 600 years to resign. <laughs> so, so, oh, oh yeah. When he resigned, it gave this pope the opportunity to yeah. be the pope. But the 112th, in other words, he was 111 and the clock is ticking, mm -hmm. you know, you're looking at the end times and all of a sudden he's gone. So what are the chances that uh, 900 years ago that an archbishop in Ireland could have just got lucky enough right. to put down 112? Well, let me give you an example of this. So this book, Petrus Romanus, great book. If this, something, if, if this is something that interests you, uh, the book Petrus Romanus by Tom, Thomas Horn and Chris Putnam, great book. They have documented now, they have carefully documented all of the prophecies and they've gone through each one and the phrase next to it to see if it was accurate or not. Let me give you an example. And you say, are they accurate? They're, they're incredible. But Pope, Bene uh, Pope Benedict XV was Pope from 1914 to 1922 during World War I. Okay. So St. Malachi's prophecy of him, two words, Religion depopulated. Okay, this is one example. Okay, well, what happened during the reign of Pope Benedict the Fifteenth? Two hundred million people left the Russian Orthodox Church, mm. and the really? Catholic Church was decimated during World War One. Yes, religion was depopulated. Yeah. Well, that's an example. That's just two words. That's that's pretty incredible. Yeah. That you would have hundreds of millions of people leaving the faith or leaving the church during that period of time. The, but let me, read, let me read the actual prophecy. The longest prophecy he gives is concerning the last pope, okay? So if this is the last pope, uh, what, what does it say about him? Okay, why is this significant? Okay, here's, here's what he says. These are the words of St. Malachi. In the final persecution of the Holy Roman Church, there will sit Peter the Roman, who will pasture his sheep in many tribulations. And when these things are finished, the city of seven hills will be destroyed. And the dreadful judge will judge his people, the end. And so his prophecy is Peter the Roman. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Does that fit? Peter the Roman is going to shepherd the Holy Catholic Church through many persecutions, through many tribulations, okay, the tribulation. And at the end of that tribulation, the city of seven hills will be destroyed. The interesting thing about that is Revelation 17 and 18, at the very end of human history, the end of the tribulation, Mystery Babylon is judged, a city with seven hills, the, the harlot. Mm. She is judged, the city is destroyed, thrown down. And so uh, he's 82 years old. Pope Francis, if this is the last pope, mm -hmm. and this is saying the last pope is gonna lead the Catholic Church through the tribulation. That's what it's saying. Wow. And at, the end, and at the end of that, the city of seven hills will be destroyed. And after that, the great judge comes and judges his people, the end. Okay, out of 112 popes. Well, Pope Francis is not a spring chicken. No. Mm -mm. And so if, if St. Malachi's word is true, if it's true, okay, he's 82 years old. But if he's gonna lead the church through the tribulation, which is seven years, if it happened today, if the rapture happened today and the tribulation started tomorrow, he would be 89 years old mm -hmm. at the end of the tribulation. So I'm saying the clock is ticking pretty hard. Yeah. If, th if this is, mm. if this is the last pope, Okay, and I'm, I'm saying if now, okay, yeah. if this is the last pope, it's just extremely interesting that he's pope right now. What? Because uh, again, I don't believe we're living in the last days. I believe we're living in the last of the last days. Mm -hmm. We've been in the last days since Israel uh, became a nation. We'll yeah. talk about that more in another program. Well, let me talk about Peter the Roman. And so you say, well, he said he said Peter the Roman uh -huh. was was going to be the pope, the last right. pope. Okay. Yeah. Well, does that fit? Well, his real name. The Pope's real name is Jorge Mario Bergoglio. So you say, well, how, how is he called Pope, pope Francis? I mean, how did he come yeah. by that name? Well, it's St. Francis of Assisi, okay, mm -hmm. who was a friar, who was a Catholic friar in the 12th century, okay. His name, his actual name is Giovanni de Petrio, Peter <laughs> de Bernadone, okay. Uh, his name was Peter, and he was Roman. Mm -hmm. He's Italy, Rome, yeah. okay, that's what it was. Uh -huh. His name literally can be translated Peter the Roman. And that's the name he chose. That's the name he chose. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're not trying to make it right. fit. And that's it, our yeah. Pope right now. That's our Pope right now. Or the Pope. Well, if, so if there's another you. Pope, this word ain't true. Okay. That's well, just very easy to yeah. say. But I, but I just think it's wow. interesting, especially in light of all the other things that we're going to talk about. Yeah. It's just interesting that in this time, you have a man there. And by the way, many of the Popes, and this is in Petrus Romanus, many of the Popes believed in the prophecy of the Popes. And they were counting themselves. 
And they were also looking at what he wrote about them. Wow. Okay. Wow. So they're, it's documented in this book. Okay. So this is not something that, and this was in the Vatican archives, by the way. Mm -hmm. Whenever uh, Ar uh, Arnold Wine found the, this prophecy of the popes, it was in the Vatican archives. So this was not some book that somebody picked up at a flea market. This is something that came out of the Vatican archives, was published, and so there is a criticism of it. And I want to be very honest about that. There are people that just think it's a mm -hmm. bunch of baloney. Mm -hmm. But after saying what I just said, I think it's interesting. Yeah. I just think it's, it's something to watch, something to look at. What is the city of the seven hills? That's Rome. Yeah. Oh. Rome is the city of seven hills. Now, a, a Catholic, there are many precious born-again Catholic people. There are many charismatic Catholic people. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in the Vatican in April. And uh, they told us that they have a cardinal over the charismatics, mm -hmm. okay? So there, there are many precious Catholic people are going, going to heaven with all the rest of us, okay? But the system, okay, the Catholic system, we all know that there's major problems with, yeah. you know, the Catholic system. Mm -hmm. And so the, and when it says the city of seven hills will be destroyed, the interesting thing about that is Revelation 17 and 18 uh, was the judgment of the harlot in Mystery Babylon. She uh, sits, it's a city, we're told, mm -hmm. on seven hills, okay? And wh wherever that city of seven hills is, it presides over multitudes of people from every tribe, nation, and tongue. Well, the Catholics have a billion yes. adherents, okay? Right. Uh -huh. And it says that the, the harlot was dressed in uh, red and purple. Uh, the uh, Catholic uh, cardinals were red. The Catholic archbishops and bishops were purple. Mm -hmm. And so again, I'm, 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 there are many precious Catholic people, but when his word says the city of seven hills, well, first of all, the last pope is going to lead the Holy Roman Church through the tribulation, and then that city is going to be destroyed. That's consistent with Revelation 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. Oh my goodness. So you also mentioned another important sign, the last years of a generation that Jesus said wouldn't pass away until all things were fulfilled. Yep, and this is a big one. So in Matthew 24, they were in the temple area and the disciples came up and they were asking Jesus, well, when, when is the end gonna be? And he mm -hmm. says, wars, rumors of wars, mm -hmm. famines, earthquakes, uh, all those kinds of things. And then he talks about the abomination of desolation. When you see uh, the standing in the holy place, you know, the abomination that makes desolate. And the, so he talks about that. Then he talks about the second coming. He says, after the tribulation of these days, they'll see the Son of Man coming in the, power, in the clouds with power and great glory. And here's what he says. After he's talked about the end times signs and the tribulation, he says, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. Mm -hmm. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words by no means pass away. Of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so will also be the coming of the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. For as in days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage mm -hmm. until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, the other le left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. So first of all, we're seeing all those things. Okay, when Jesus says, when you see all these things happen, we're, yeah. we're seeing the, uh, everything happen. Oh and by the way, Jordan issued a warning to Israel. You're talking about the abomination of desolation. There has mm -hmm. to be a temple on the Temple mm -hmm. Mount. Mm -hmm. Jordan issued a warning to Israel this week because of the activity of the Jews on the Temple Mount. The status quo is being disrupted. Wow. And the Jews have not been on the, they weren't allowed to even go up there for a long mm -hmm. time. Then they were allowed to go up there and pray a little bit. Now they're going up there and having meetings and they're, they're wanting to rebuild the temple. And Jordan said, watch it, watch it. You guys are upsetting the status quo. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous momentum and we're gonna do a program on that. There's tremendous momentum to build the third temple. So yeah. we're, we're seeing all these things. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus describes the rapture. That's what he just did. Mm -hmm. he, he described the rapture yeah. and said, it's a selective rapture. Right. That it's gonna be business as usual, okay? Like the days of Noah and Lot before the, the devastation came. And one will, be take, one will be taken, one will be left. And he says, Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things take place. Assuredly means I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. This is a guarantee. Take it to the bank. The generation, now, and some people say, well, he was talking about his generation. It passed away. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know it wasn't his yeah. generation. Yeah. You know, they all died. Yeah. Okay? 
And so the, this generation, the generation that sees the beginning of the end times will see the end of the end times, including the tribulation. That's very important. Okay. So how do you know it's one generation? Joel 2, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, among the remnant who the Lord calls. For behold, in those days and at that time when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. So God says, now this is everything here, the, the, the blood moons, the wonders in the sky. This is the real global warning. I'm yeah. warning right here. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, God will yeah. decide, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. And so the, the regathering of the Jews, mm -hmm. the persecution of the Jewish people, which is on the rise all over the world, including the United States of right. America, yep. and the dividing of the land of Israel. Everything in our generation lines up with this right here. But God says, at the same time, in the same time frame that I bring back my people to their land, 1948, Armageddon. I'm bringing all the nations together and they're gonna enter into the Valley of Judgment. Jehoshaphat means Jehovah is judged. They're gonna enter into the, the Valley of Jehoshaphat. This is Armageddon. This is the final scene of human history, all happening in one generation. In God's mind, and we know according to this, in God's mind, the end times began in 1948. Wow. We know it from here. Okay, here, Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen, mm -hmm. look up and lift up your head, your redemption draws near. Mm -hmm. And some people would say, well, you know, you don't know how long a generation is, you know, right. but, but we do, the Bible tells us. Well, what about in Luke 21? There's instructions for us on what we're supposed to do when yeah. we see all this happening. Can you kind of enlighten us on that? Well, the main thing is to watch. You know, just, mm -hmm. just to be prepared. Now, by the way, Jesus said that we wouldn't know the hour, but we know the season. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe that Jesus will return at, at uh, Feast of Trumpets, at Rosh Hashanah. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll talk about that in another program, the Feast of Israel. is the, the first four feasts were literally fulfilled. I believe the next three are about to be fulfilled. And by the way, that's coming up in a little over a month. That's what I was The Feast of I Trumpets. That's September? Yeah, yeah. I, the September, the end of September. Or I don't think that, this, yeah. There's no doubt about it in my mind that he's going to. But, but what he said is, watch therefore. Okay, and the watching is talking about like in the evening, like the first watch, the second mm -hmm. watch, the third watch. Mm -hmm. You don't get drunk. You don't go carousing. You don't, you're, you're not right. in the world. You'd be real right. alert, you, on alert. The, you, and people, people mock this kind of teaching all the time. But that's what Peter talks about in Second Peter. A lot of people say, that's the craziest thing. You really believe that Jesus is going to return yes. in the twinkling of an eye. Mm. Yes. And Jesus said it will come as a snare on all of those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. When Jesus returns, when the rapture happens and we're taken out, the world is trapped in seven years of hell on earth. Mm. And not only is there the wrath of the lamb, Satan is thrown out of heaven, there's the wrath of Satan. It says he has great wrath knowing that his time is short. Ooh. Hell on earth is about to break Lots out. Lots of wrath. Yeah, but, but <laughs> it's this generation. Okay, so the question is then how long is the generation? Okay, so, but the Bible tells us. Okay. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me put it this way. So Jesus said the generation that sees the beginning of the end times will see the end of the end times. He says it very clearly, okay? Mm -hmm. Joel says the same thing. So uh, if a person was born on May 13th of 1948, the day before Israel became a nation, mm -hmm. they're going, if they live a normal lifespan, mm -hmm. they're going to see the end of the tribulation. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus, mm -hmm. he described all the end times, the abomination of desolation, yeah. the second coming, everything. He said, the generation that sees those things, will see all things fulfilled. Okay. Wow. So if they lived a normal life, how long would they live? Well, uh, one of the laws of hermeneutics is the Bible interprets the Bible. So if Jesus says a generation is going to see it, Psalm 90 verse 10, the days of our lives are 70 years. Mm -hmm. And if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Okay, so that the Bible tells us how long a generation is there. Now, so let's just say that a generation is 80 years. You say, well, how far are we since the yeah. clock started ticking? Right. Okay. Uh, 71 and a half years. From the beginning <laughs> when Israel was birthed, remember they celebrated their 70th yeah. anniversary last mm -hmm. year and we moved our embassy to Jerusalem. Remember right. that? Okay, so now we're at 71 and a half years. But wait, wait, wait. 
if a generation is 80 years, mm -hmm. you have to take this and you have to add seven years to it. The tribulation. If we are raptured today yeah. wow. and the tribulation begins tomorrow, at the end of the tribulation, it'll be 78 and a half years. Wow. So if, if a generation is 80 years, including the tribulation, we're, we're there. And so I'm not setting dates, but I'm doing the math. Yeah. And I'm saying, when we're talking about last things. The, these things are lining up together. Yeah. You see, the last pope, the last days of the generation that Jesus is talking about here. And so it's amazing. It's just amazing what the Bible has to say mm -hmm. about the time we're living in. And it's not presumption mm -mm. to say, you know, that yeah. we're the last generation or we're at the end of the end times. Well, the lawlessness has Because you're just crazy. following scripture. Right. Yeah, that's right. But in the words of Jesus. Yes. The, another law of hermeneutics is the words of Jesus are par paramount in Scripture. Mm -hmm. If there's any doubt about what something says, Jesus decides. Yeah. And you take the words of Jesus. Jesus talked a lot about the end times. He did. And about his return. So we have all that information. So, I mean, a couple of things you mentioned about this generation, of course, the the blood moons, the Revelation mm -hmm. 12 sign. But, mm -hmm. I mean, those of us that watch the news today, oh, my I mean, Lord. the persecution of the Jewish people, BDS and all. I mean, oh, it is just exactly. unbelievable. People right here in America, we're supposed to be the greatest mm -hmm. ally to Israel mm -hmm. that actually absolutely hate the Jewish people. And we're seeing the rise of that. Well, you heard that in Joel yes. 2 and 3. Yeah. And it was talking about the way I'm coming, I'm coming and I'm going to reckon with you on how you've treated my people. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you see these congresswomen right now and others, Louis Farrakhan and others in America, mm -hmm. they absolutely hate Israel. Mm. They hate mm -hmm. the Jews. The United Nations absolutely yeah. hates Israel. And the rewritten history that somehow yeah. they're living in Palestine oh. when it, it's 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 a complete lie it's, and yet yeah. people believe it and yeah. take it hook, line, and sinker don't even know what their history is concerning the, the that Jews, land. The Jews supernaturally got to go back to their homeland after mm -hmm. six million of them were killed in, in Germany. And it was, they can't find a resting place in the world. America has been their best friend. Yeah. This has been the best place for them to live. And even now there's anti-Semitism here in America on the rise, mm -hmm. college campuses and other places. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're just at that point in time that all signs point here. And when it talks about you've divided up my land, America has participated in land for peace. Yeah. We have pressured yeah. Israel and giving, and there's no peace. There's, they give up land, but there, yeah. there's no peace. No. Right. And we were in East Jerusalem doing those programs a couple of years ago, Joni, yeah. at the Daystar Studio. And it is the, the tension in there because they want East Jerusalem. The, yeah. and, and I believe that's part of the Antichrist deal. Mm -hmm. I believe, I personally believe the deal the Antichrist will make with Israel is if they give up East Jerusalem, they'll get the Temple Mount to be able to build their temple. I believe that. Now, there's another interesting thing about that too. Mm. And this is something I thought about the other day. It doesn't matter if they're given permission. The two witnesses are present mm. and they're bulletproof. Mm. The presence of the two witnesses alone, they can rebuild the temple and they can't touch them. The two witnesses can call fire down from heaven. They, mm. they can judge all their enemies. And so it was interesting. This is during the seven years that during we see the, seven the two. Years. Do we well, see well, them well, the first three and a half or the last three and a half? The, the first three and a half years of the tribulation, the two witnesses are uh, are ministering on the Temple Mount. They're completely 100% untouchable. Right. Uh, they preach the gospel. They're just like the Avengers. That's <laughs> right, that's right. But a little more powerful. Okay. And so they're, they, they. I just watched the Avengers. The world hates them. Yeah. The, the, they are so hated yeah. that the Antichrist kills them in the middle of the tribulation. Yeah. And they lay their bodies oh, wow. in the streets, and it says, and whole world watches. This is the only generation where the whole world could watch something at the same time. Exactly. exactly. On their and, phones, on their TVs. Right. And everything. they send gifts to each other. The, you, you know you're hated when people mm. send gifts when you die. But the oh. two witnesses. They willingly give up their lives knowing they're oh, going to yeah. die. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, but they've already accomplished what they wanted yeah. to accomplish. That's right, and they're resurrected, they were, and then they're uh, then they're raptured. Okay, mm -hmm. there's a rapture before the tribulation. <laughs> there's a rapture in the middle of the two witnesses. Yeah. And there's a rapture at the end of the people who have been saved and martyred. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's actually several raptures there. But but these two guys. But I was thinking about it the other day and just thought, well, it doesn't matter if the if the antichrist gives them permission or not right. in the covenant that he yeah. confirms with them the presence of the two witnesses. And it also explains that in the middle of the tribulation when the two witnesses are killed, mm. why they would stop the sacrifices. Mm. See, the world yeah. is, is incensed at the fact that a temple is being rebuilt. And can you imagine what Pete is going to say about animal sacrifices? They're going to be sacrificing <laughs> animals. 
and the Antichrist is going to kill the two witnesses and come then and stop the sacrifices. And that's, and Jesus said, and that begins the greatest tribulation Ooh. in the history of the world. And if those days would not have been cut short, no flesh would have survived. Amazing. So that's going to happen pretty soon. Yes. <laughs> well, you Ooh. know, whenever we do these programs, I always have just a <sighs> sense that there are some of you watching that you're not ready to meet the Lord. And you hear all of this and, and I said, we don't want you to be fearful. We want you to understand that we share these truths so that you can be ready yeah. because that's God's greatest desire is to welcome you into heaven. We don't want anyone to have to go through what we're talking about. The Bible tells us, would you lead us in a sinner's prayer? Yeah. We will pray after you. I, I, I believe there are many that want to pray yes. today. Pray, pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you. I open my heart to you. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you are the Son of God. And you died for my sins. And you died for my sins. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And be my Lord and Savior. And be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the power to change. Give me the power to change. I pray for the gift of eternal life. I pray for the gift of eternal life. And for forgiveness of all of my sins. And for forgiveness of all my sins. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, Jesus came into your heart and you're a Christian. Amen. Mm. It's really that simple. Well, we've seen an increase in anti-Semitism, rebellion against God, and ancient biblical signs coming to pass seemingly every day. Are these just symptoms of a world groaning or is there more to it? Well, today, with the help of our special guest, we'll continue our look at the end times to reveal what you need to know. But first, joining me around the table is Kendra Kelly Dean. Hey. These are important. These are shows so In times, <laughs> yes. Know. They're so heavy with so much information. <laughs> yeah. But it's good. And I know we just finished one show, and, and I just kept thinking, you know, in between before we were starting this next one, Information is so important because when you have it, you get to make that choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and God loves you. He loves everyone. He's just ready to welcome them into your fam, into His family. Yeah. But it doesn't get just like, it doesn't stop there. Yeah. The moment you accept Him as your Savior, now you get to join a church body, and yeah. now you get to find out, okay, God, what is my purpose on this earth, and what right. can I do yeah. to win more people to you? Yeah. So. I'm trying to stay focused on, okay, this is what we need to do, you know, to yeah. keep pushing forward and winning That's more good. people to the Lord during these shows. But wow, so they're great Rebecca shows. Lamb Weiss, I know one of the things you mentioned on the previous program is that, you know, people don't need to be fearful right. as we talk yeah. about end times. No, and I think, you know, fear is of the enemy and fear, well, you know, the enemy wants to use fear to paralyze us and he right. wants the body of Christ to retreat, to draw into themselves. But this is a time for us to stand up and to stand together and yes. to be unified and work because yeah. Christ is coming. And be yeah. ready. Yeah, and be, and be ready. ready and be sober and vigilant. Yes. yes. So as um, Peter says, you That's know. That's right. That's Cindy Murdoch. We've been hearing Jesus is coming. I know, and you don't have to <laughs> I mean, for a long we time. We have, yeah. and, and I think now I, I sense this kind of excitement. There is, there is an excitement. I can remember yep. as a teenager, they would preach, the preacher would preach on yeah. the rapture of the church. And I may not have been as good that weekend, and I would just like go listen by my parents' door to make, make sure, sure I could was still there. hear them breathing that I hadn't been left behind. So. That is funny. But Jimmy Evans, oh I mean, goodness. I know you've been hearing it really your whole life as well. Jesus is coming, he's coming, but we have real evidence to prove that he yes. is coming soon. Yeah, you know, when I was about 20, Two years old, 21 years old, I read The, La the Late Great Planet Earth. Mm -hmm. I had just been saved for about a year. Everybody loved that book. By Wait, the way. who well, wrote that Hal book? Lindsay. Hal Lindsay. Oh, wrote The Late it. Great Planet Earth. It was yeah. the book, you know, for a yeah. long time. And um, it absolutely fascinated me that history was told in advance mm. through prophecy and how much of the Bible was prophecy. Yeah. And so, but back then, it seemed like, hey, we're yeah. at the end. Look how bad the world is. <laughs> yeah. Oh my and goodness. And I started preaching on prophecy in 1983. Wow. Yeah, and so the yeah. when I first started preaching on prophecy, I just thought, look at the R-rated movies that are out there. <laughs> oh. Look at look at all this is this is Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, yeah. we're at the very end. Well, yeah. that's just yeah. baby case right. compared to what's on now. So oh, true. So and true. so it, uh, it, but but here's I've been a student of Bible prophecy for 45 years, mm. and and I love it. I do it my I do it for fun. I mean, yeah. literally do. Yeah. When I'm sitting around my office with nothing to do, I'll read a prophecy book. I love it. So I'm always fascinated by it. But here's what's fascinating to me. It came true. Mm. Israel came back. Yeah. They got Jerusalem back. Yeah. 
-hmm. You know, you look at all the things that they said would happen in, in the scriptures. And, and the, about 30% of the Bible is prophecy. Yeah, and most of it true. is in times prophecy. This is the most prophesied about time wow. in human history. So it's not like we don't have much information. We have it's tremendous true. amount of right. information yeah. here. And because this is the generation where more people are alive than ever before in the history of the world. And the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. Oh, Just yeah. the prophecies mm -hmm. that he fulfilled with his life for us to it's know true. that he is the son of well, God. Mathematically yeah, impossible. Mathematically impossible. That you cannot fulfill those prophecies mathematically. When you like look at this world today, you can get kind of overwhelmed and be like, what is going on? But when you actually go into scripture, the Bible talks about it and it brings such clarity to the situation. And, and then that brings me yes. peace really because does. I was like, God knew this was, was gonna happen and he was yeah. preparing us. That's, That's right. true. Well, so this uh, program, we're gonna talk about the last major sign yep. before Ooh. the rapture of the church and we're all ready to hear we're that. We're on the edge of our seats. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're talking about last things. We're talking about the convergence mm -hmm. of, of just a lot of the things mm -hmm. that are gonna happen at the very end, they're converging. And one of them is the last major sign before the rapture. Now, First Thessalonians, uh, the second coming of Christ is talked about in every chapter, the return of Christ. Mm -hmm in every chapter. And, and the Apostle Paul says, comfort each other with these words. In 1 Thessalonians 4 is where we have the clearest description of the rapture, okay? Mm -hmm. Then, uh, unfortunately, uh, those, that, those letters went to the churches of Thessalonica. Mm -hmm. And there was a rumor going out that Jesus had already come and they had been left behind, which would upset you. Oh, yeah. So 2 oh, yeah. Thessalonians is written just weeks after 1 Thessalonians. And what the Apostle Paul is trying to do is comfort them. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to mm -hmm. tell them when Jesus is coming. So this is 2 Thessalonians 2, in verse 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away, the word apostasy is, apostasy, until the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshiped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. That's the abomination of desolation. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So. The Apostle Paul is saying, hey, listen now, don't, don't be shaken, don't be upset. The day of the Lord hasn't come and it's not gonna come until the great falling mm -hmm. away, okay, apostasy. So we're, we're living in a world today. And again, when you look 30 or 40 years ago, you thought, man, this is bad. Mm -hmm. Well, in the last 15 years, Unbelievable. In the last 15 yeah, years, so there has been a massive falling away from Judeo-Christian values, it's morals, true. ethics, marriage, right. sexuality. Truth. I was preaching uh, for a friend of mine in Florida, and he said, Jimmy, I'm calling an emergency meeting of the parents of the church. And I said, why? He said, because of the sexual stuff that's going on in the high schools. Mm -hmm. And he said, my son is, you know, he found out about all this stuff, and his friend is suicidal. And I said, his friend is suicidal. And he said, well, first of all, the big thing now is pansexuality. Mm -hmm. I'm not heterosexual. I'm not homosexual. I'm pansexual. And that means I have sex with wh whomever, mm -hmm. whenever I want, and nothing to find. In other words, this is moral rebellion. Yeah. And I, God doesn't decide if I'm male or female. I do. Yeah. Okay. So, and I think his Facebook has 57 gender pronouns right. that you can choose from. It's like, you call me Zay, you call me whatever you want to call me. Them. Yeah. I can't call you him. Well, Ge Genesis 1 says God made a male and female, period. Yeah. Right. God made a male and female. Right. We are not masters of our right. own fate. We're, we are owned by God. 1 Corinthians 6 says, mm -hmm. you're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your bodies. And that's yeah. talking about sex. Wait, so what happened? The guy was suicidal? So he, you're talking about the pastor? He got online and he was looking at these creatures called furries. And they're animals that have been sexualized. They're oh. called what? what? Furries. furries. And they're animals that have been sexualized. In other words, yeah. it's, it's like an animation. Yeah. And he was addicted and he fell in love with one of them. Oh, goodness. And he told my, the pastor's son, he told the pastor's son, I'm in love with this creature and I, can't, I know I can never have any real contact with her. I'm going to have to kill myself. I can't live without her. 
And, but the sexual immorality, and he told me a story, he was just like, I've never heard of anything like that in my life. He called a meeting of the parents just to open the subject up and say, the, our children are being exposed. Think about, because of the internet, what yeah, people are being mm -hmm. exposed to today right. that you could have never been exposed to 50 oh, years ago, 40 no. years ago. Oh, you know? yeah. And so we're, we are seeing an apostasy. Uh, we were talking about Joshua Harris, and this is very much in the news. He, yeah. he uh, wrote the book, I Kissed Dating Goodbye. Yeah. And um, he later renounced the book. He's now renounced Christ. Mm. And many people have openly renounced Christ. Joshua Harris, he's divorced his wife. Divorced his wife and, and has renounced Christ. And has renounced. And what God. we're seeing, though, is just a, a rejection of the, of the Word of God. That By is the, apostasy. That's and what the he Bible renounced is. everything he wrote. He right. said, I completely yeah. take that back. See, the, the Antichrist is called the lawless one. Well, he's not lawless because he speeds and doesn't pay his taxes. Right. Lawless there is anomia. It's against the word. Right. He he rejects the word of God. The 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 world is going to absolutely fall in love with the Antichrist because he is opposite mm. of the word of God. So a friend of mine, so you talk about biblical apostasy. Jesus in Matthew 25, in Matthew 24, Jesus was asked by the disciples, when's the end gonna be? And so he goes through all the signs of the times and everything. Then in Matthew 25, still talking about the end he tells three parables. And the first parable he told is the parable of the virgins. Mm -hmm. And he said the kingdom of heaven is like, you know, a man who went away, a bridegroom that went away, and his virgins, his 10 virgins were waiting on him. Five were wise, five were foolish. Five had oil in their lamps, which represents the spirit of God, ready to meet him. Five mm -hmm. were foolish, they didn't have oil in their lamps. And the bridegroom came and the five wise came in to the wedding. And he slammed the door in the face to the other five saying, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jesus gave the percentage of the church that would be false when he returned. Yeah. It's 50-50. Okay. Wow. According to Jesus, oh, when he returns, half the church will be dead. Oh, In other words, they wow. fall away. There are denominations that are pro-abortion. There are denominations yeah. that are... That are pro-homosexuality. Uh, pro-homosexuality. Yeah. And they're, they're having christening services over transsexuals into their new sex. Oh, that is... So they, denomina there are denominations that have degenderized the Word of God. Right. And they won't refer to God any longer as a he. So you have you have Christians and denominations that have apostatized from the word of God. Saying that's not even relevant anymore. Saying this is relevant. So uh, my friend uh, who is a denominational pastor, a very large denomination, went to a denominational convention. Okay, this was probably two years ago. A speaker is speaking at this convention and he gets up in the pulpit and said, I will no longer allow my life or my morality to be defined by the four corners of this, the four narrow corners of this book. Jesus. It's time for another testament to be written that is more modern and inclusive. Ugh. And I said, oh my what God. happened? He said, thunderous applause. <gasps> thunderous applause. Oh I will not let my life be governed by the narrow corner, the four narrow corners mm. of this book. This is the Word of God. Mm. This is the inspired and infallible Word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely intact. You see, the, the Apostle Paul only gave one sign. When he came to the church at Thessalonica and he said, don't worry, it hadn't come. Let me tell you what's gonna happen before it happens. Mm -hmm. A worldwide falling away wow. from beliefs and morality that was previously held onto and espoused. Mm. We're, we're saying it, we're not just saying it, it's just a moral free fall. It's anarchy, right. moral anarchy. Right. So this is, this is the American Humanist mm -hmm. Association website. Uh, you can see this on there and their, their uh, motto is good without a God. Man is the measure of all things. We don't need God. We're going to save ourselves. This is what they say. Do you, would you say humanism falls in line with like the spirit of the Antichrist? Oh, absolutely. Uh, humanism is basically the unofficial religion of yeah. America. Uh, a lot of what you and see. Europe. Yeah, we, we, we're going to take, we're our own God. Yeah. You don't tell us what to do. So they have assertions. Okay, this is their fifth assertion. Humanism asserts that nature, that the nature of the universe depicted by modern science makes unacceptable any supernatural or cosmic guarantees of human values. And so what they're doing is they're absolutely unshackling themselves from any sense of biblical morality, which is an absolute fulfillment of Psalm 2. Psalm 2 is an end time uh, psalm. Here's what it says. Now, this is talking about Jesus in the return of Jesus. Why do the nations rage mm -hmm. and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth have set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, against God the Father and God the Son. The nations, this is the end times, the nations have come together and here's what they said. 
let, let us break, uh, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast their cords from us. This is what the world is saying about God and Jesus. He who sits in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath. That's the tribulation. Mm -hmm. And distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill as I am. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. This is God the Father talking to God the Son. Mm -hmm. You are my son. Today I've begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Listen, you shall break them with a rod of iron. That's Revelation 19, 15 about the millennium. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Listen, kiss the son capital S. Mm -hmm. Kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but just a little. And Revelation 6 calls the, the tribulation the wrath of the lamb. Okay. So the world is rebelling against God. This is the picture here. Mm -hmm. They're rebelling against God the Father and God the Son and they're saying we will not have your cords on us. We are cutting them in two and we're rejecting. And it says, he who sits in heaven laughs. It's like parents watching two-year-olds trying to take over the house and kick mm, them out. Right. Is God's up in heaven going, what? Right. Like this. He said, you better kiss the son mm. while there's time or he's going to visit you in his wrath. Wow. So what we're, this is Revelation 6 talking about the same kings. Okay, Psalm 2 is talking about kings. Here it is. Revelation 6. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide, from, uh, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. So I'm saying there are mockers out there. Those of you watching, I'm sure you're not a mocker, but you know a lot of them around you. And I'm telling you in the twinkling of an eye, their mouths are gonna be shut yeah. and they're gonna be trapped on an earth where there is seven years of wrath and it's called the wrath of Jesus Christ. They have rejected him. They have rejected his word. They have spit in his face and in God's patience, he has waited. He has waited, he has waited and he has waited. But it says, Jesus said of the rapture, it will come as a snare on all of those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. And I'm saying to all of you who hear all the mockery and all of the apostasy that's going on right now, be strong. Yes. Uh, like in the days of Noah, like in the days of yes. Lot, the righteous remnant, be strong. Don't listen to it. Don't let it beat you down. And understand, Noah looked like a total idiot yeah. building a huge ship on dry land and there had never been rain, a total idiot. But on the day the rain started, he looked like a genius. Mm. Right. They mocked him while he was building yeah. it. They mocked him while he was building it. And so you may, people so may- we need, if we need to be willing to be that's right. a total idiot. That's right. We, we do we look foolish. We already are. We, yeah. that's, 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 that's already and, and, But, that's but the point is, there will come, a, Jesus said it, it's going to happen. And this is Psalm chapter two. Wow. This yeah. talking about an end time revolt. And this is what 2 Thessalonians 2 is saying. This is the sign. So, so a lot of people will ask me, what, what needs to happen before the rapture happens? Not one thing. Mm. The rapture wow. could happen. And again, I believe that Jesus is coming back the Feast of Trumpets. And we'll talk about that in another program. But uh, I believe that Jesus could come back at any time. We have seen the falling away. We are seeing the yeah, falling so away. True. And you're yeah. even seeing now Christians and pastors. Yeah. Shocking. Not, not backsliding, not falling. Denouncing. Right. Renouncing. Renouncing, or renouncing their yeah. faith. Or rewriting portions of scripture or trying to make things relevant and, and right. add things and take things away, which is forbid in the Bible as well. Forbidden. And you have Christian, so-called Christians on, on the, uh, social media mm. posting things that are just the, the greatest heresies in the mm. world, endorsing all kinds of sins, all Jesus. kinds of horrible things in the name of Jesus. And they're liked. They have millions of followers. Yeah. They're very popular. And so I know, I just, I know a lot of people wow. who, you know, uh, people that I used to pastor and stuff like that, they're, they're so liberal, it's incredible. Now, I'm not saying they're not Christians that are going to hell, but I'm saying that what we're seeing is even Christians deceived mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Christians falling away from the mm -hmm. faith. So, so when you see the apostasy that's going on in the world right now, just remember that is a major end time sign that wasn't true 20 years ago. Yeah. But it's true today. That's another reason I believe we're living in the last days. Mm -hmm. All right, well, the last days of the church on the earth, 
before the rapture. Expand okay. on that a little bit, if you would. Okay, so we're seeing the great falling away, okay? And Paul says, the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Then the lawless one will be revealed, okay? Now, some people say, now this is the rapture, mm -hmm. okay? The Holy Spirit, the, the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost. Right. The, uh, the believers, 120 believers. His and, presence is here right now and, mm -hmm. upon the earth, thank God. Yes. And, and we're, restra we're restraining. Okay, I have marriage today. Okay, we're restraining divorce. As a pastor, I'm trying to help people live for God and to restrain sin and yes. all kinds of problems. The church, think of, what, think of America and the abortion issue without the church. Oh my goodness! Oh my we're the ones. Who, it would be. It would yeah. be completely. Accepted. Well, th right. think, think of any issue. <laughs> oh my See, goodness! See, when, when the rapture wow. occurs, we have seen the sign mm -hmm. that uh, everything the Bible said would happen at the end has happened, or are just about to happen. But we have seen the great falling away. We're watching it with our eyes every single day. Yeah. Okay, it says Paul says once the apostasy comes, then. The Holy Spirit and the church now restraining sin mm. right. is going to be taken away. Then the lawless one will be revealed. So uh, we were talking about who the Antichrist is. Well, I'm not, I'm not for sure. I've got a few you know, top <laughs> candidates in there, <laughs> but I, I'm not sure. But the church won't know. But imagine a world without the church. And the Holy Spirit. The Holy yes. Spirit. Imagine. Oh, now, there'll still be people God. getting saved during the tribulation. It'll be hell on earth. Uh -huh. I, I, and let me say this. I would imagine... The, the day after the rapture, hundreds of millions of people mm -hmm. will accept Christ. Right, because they would have the been churches. exposed to the gospel. Right, they would have right. had family members. They would have Absolutely. known the Bible. They've been watching these programs. And, and yes. so they're going to know immediately. But you talk about a difficult oh, time to goodness. live. Well, there will be, uh, you know, in Revelation 20, it says, I saw the souls of those who have been beheaded who would not take the mark of the mm -hmm. beast. And it says, then they were resurrected. I would imagine mm -hmm. uh, that... Half of the world's population will be killed during the tribulation. Okay, yeah. billions of people will be killed. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. Hundreds of millions or tens of millions will be martyred. The Antichrist has authority over them for that period of time, and he is Satan incarnate, and he will kill every Christian he can get his hand, hands on. I'm saying, for for some of you uh, watching right now, this is the last chance you will have to receive Jesus Let's possibly. Pray. Let's pray. Okay. Yes. And, so I, I want to lead you in this yes. prayer. If if you have been waiting, okay, yeah. if you if you've been waiting to tell somebody about Jesus, this is the time to tell yes. them about Jesus yeah. yes. because you're their best friend yeah. if you do that. But if you haven't received Christ as the Lord of your life, you you can know that you're a Christian and you can know that you'll go in the rapture or you'll go to heaven. I want you to pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus open my heart to you. Open, open my, my heart, heart to you. And I invite you to come in. And I invite, I invite you, you to come, come in. in. To be my Lord and Savior. To be, to be my, my Lord, Lord and Savior. I pray that you'll give me the power to change. I pray, I pray that you'll give me the power to change. I pray that you'll give me the gift of eternal life. I pray that you'll give me the gift of eternal life. And I pray you'll forgive me of all of my sins. And I pray that you'll forgive me of all of my sins. I dedicate my life to you. You. I dedicate my life to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, he came in, and you're now a Christian. It's just that simple. That's simple. It's just that simple. Some of you are just kind of paralyzed as we're talking about this, but I want you to know that that prayer from a sincere heart to an almighty God is just that simple. Yeah. And um, the Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful yeah. and just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to encourage you to get into a good church. Call the number on your screen. Let someone know about it. I'll send you a little book entitled Now What? But we can't do these programs without giving you an opportunity to pray. So welcome into the family of God. Now let's continue because I know there's some more interesting uh, things. The last chance some people will have to receive Christ before the rapture of the church and the beginning of the tribulation. Yeah, Jesus said, Luke 21, take heed to yourselves lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing drunkenness and the cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly, it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. Well, let, me, let me say a couple of things. When the, rap, when the rapture happens, it will scare the absolute wits out of everybody on the earth. Oh, Jesus yeah. said a snare is an animal trap. Mm. And an animal's just kind of minding its own business, yeah. walking along, all of a sudden it's trapped. Mm. Yeah. Wow. When, when the rapture happens, it traps the entire world. Yeah. Every human being that doesn't go up in the, in the rapture, you're trapped in a world uh, that uh, meters, uh, at the end of the tribulation, all sea life is dead, 
All the water has been turned to blood. All the green grass and trees are burned up. A meteor, the wormwood has hit the, has hit the world. The Antichrist has killed, the, you know, in the four horsemen of the apocalypse, mm -hmm. one of the horses, 25% of the world's population is killed. Mm -hmm. the, when the kings of the east come across the Euphrates River, a third of mankind is killed. So you do the math of the mm. devastation on the planet. It, Jesus said, it's going, to, you, be, you be watching, you be ready, mm -hmm. because it's gonna come unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. When people don't think I'm coming, that's when I'm coming. When they're saying peace and safety, sudden destruction, but you guys should be watching. And then he says yeah. here, watch therefore and pray always that you may be, may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That's the rapture. So all these, th the, the tribulation, some people say we're going, the Christians are going through the tribulation. No, we're not. He said it would be like the days of Noah and Lot, buying and selling, marrying, and giving in marriage. Let me just tell you something. When billions of people have died, when all sea life is dead, when all the fresh waters turn to blood, when all the green grass and trees are dried up, there will not be buying and selling, marrying, no. and giving in marriage. That's why right. they call, people are crying out for the rocks to That's kill right. them. They just want to die. That's Get right. It's horrible. Here. It's awful. Yeah. It's wrath. And okay. if you don't take the mark of the beast. But they, yeah. The Antichrist is, is on a rampage. And so Jesus said, Noah, not one drop of rain hit Noah's head. Woo. The angel <laughs> said to Lot before the destruction came, before the destruction... God did not put Lot in a storm shelter in the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah and say, write it out, dude. No, he got him <laughs> out. Know, he got him out. And the yeah. angel said, we can't judge this place until you arrive at your destination. Mm, Jesus wow. said, it'll be just like that. Oh, yeah. Business as <laughs> usual, and nothing's going to happen down here. See, there's seven years of the marriage supper of the Lamb, seven years of the wrath of the Lamb. Take your choice. Mm. Take your choice. And if you receive Jesus, he is going to come and he is going to take us away. And we're going to marry him for seven years. Listen, he said, be, be praying now that you can be counted worthy to escape all these things. Mm -hmm. And some people will say to me, Jimmy, you're an escapist. You bet I am. Is I'm just <laughs> doing, too. I'm just praying what, the way Jesus told me <laughs> yeah. to pray. Yeah, I don't exactly. want to go through that stuff. No. I want to stand before the <laughs> yeah, Son of Man. Amen. Well, uh, this is Ooh. just so exciting and really exhilarating to yeah. hear, to know, to understand. And that's why we share it with you. And uh, unfortunately, we are out of time. But I want to remind you that when we talk about the end times, again, it's not to frighten you. Yeah. As believers, we all know that Jesus has secured our hope. Mm -hmm. So don't be discouraged. Yes. We talk about the end times so that you know how what we're seeing come to pass lines up with God's Word. If you're watching today, maybe you don't know where you're going to spend eternity again. Those of you that prayed with us, I want you to be sure to call that number on the screen. Let us know about that and so we can send you a little free book. About Speaking to us about the return of Christ through mysterious signs in the heavens and how is a prophecy from a 12th century rabbi coming to pass before our very eyes? With the help of today's guest, we're going to gain some insight into these questions and more about the end times. But first, joining me around the table is my daughter, Rachel Lamb Brown. End times, are you excited to hear about all of this? It's always so interesting. It is interesting. And there's so much to learn and so much to know. And one of my favorite guests is here to teach us today. So, did you ever have you ever tried to understand Revelation? I mean, and read through. It's, it's pretty difficult, it's isn't it, to understand? It's really difficult, yes. Yeah. So hopefully we can understand it better today. Dorothy Newton, how are you? <laughs> great, great. Are you Just ready happy. to hear about end times? Yes, and definitely from one of our favorite people, of course. Yes. I mean, I always learn so much. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. he's the best teacher. That's mm -hmm. the only way I get it is it's from him. Yeah. yeah, he really is. <laughs> That's a good point. Rebecca Lamb Weiss, how Hi. are you? I'm fantastic. You're good? Yes, and I have tried to study Revelation, and it is very complicated <laughs> because it's a bunch of, you know, it's, I don't know if the word is imagery or yeah. metaphors. Yeah. You know, there's like women and beasts and dragons and heads, and it's very confusing. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. So we're, we're going to ask our guest yeah. today, does he understand all of that? How are you, Cindy I'm Murdoch? I'm great, thank you. All right, and our one of our favorite people yeah. in all the world at the yeah. table, Jimmy Evans, is here. Good to be here, thank Do you, you understand all of that imagery in Revelation? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I, I try to, but uh, it's fascinating. It yeah. is. But, but the, uh, the thing I love is that the Lord has told us the future in advance so we're prepared right. and we're not scared to death. Exactly. Because the, it, it, we're, we're comforted to know that God has told us the future in advance and that he's coming for us and we're not going to go through yes. the final seven years of, yes. of what's going to happen in the world. 
That's right. Well, as unrest, confusion, and rebelliousness continues to grow and become commonplace in the world around us, there's no doubt we're drawing closer to Christ's second coming. And today, Jimmy Evans is here to reveal some end time prophecies that have recently been fulfilled and how they should, yes, bring us hope as believers. Now, we're going to scratch the surface today, but for people, I'm just going to tell you right at the beginning, if you want more information, they can always go to... Endtimes.com. And this is a new website I have. It's the Tipping Point Prophecy yeah. Update. You have all this information on there? It's all on, all on there. I'm proud that you got that handle, Endtimes.com. That's I know. impressive. Can you believe that? Yes. Endtimes.com. And they can just go on there. It's $7 a month or $70 a year. And the reason for the charge is it helps to support Marriage Today, yes. our marriage Aww. ministry. Oh, okay. And so, That's but, awesome. But on there, I go into depth on a lot of the subjects that we talk about right at the end times. I love it yeah. because it gives me kind of a form. I do both podcasts and also blogs on there. Okay. And so if anyone's interested, endtimes.com. All right, that's great. You'll have to avail yourself to that. So let's kind of, if we can, go back. Last things before uh, the return of Christ. We're going to maybe repeat a few things for those who didn't get to hear uh, you talk about those. So I'm just going to say, go for it. Well, the, one of the things that happened, the, the most significant prophetic event that has happened in my lifetime was the reunification of Jerusalem in 1967. Right. Now, I was not alive uh, when Israel became a nation in 1948. I was born in 1953. So the second most significant thing that happened has been the Revelation 12 sign. Okay, this, and, and we're going to read it here in just a minute, but it says, a great sign appeared in the heaven. This happened two years ago. Okay, so here's what Luke 21, this is Jesus, and he's talking about the signs of the end time. There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, and that means there's no solution to the problems in the nations, which is happening. The sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from terror, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, that's happening. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. That could be talking about nuclear war, uh, which is new to the 20th century in, in our times. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when you see these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. So Jesus said, they were asking him, hey, when's the end gonna be? Mm -hmm. And he says, well, there's gonna be signs. There's gonna be signals. Mm -hmm. In the sun, moon, and stars, uh, Genesis 1 says God made the, the sun, moon, and stars for signals and for mm -hmm. feasts, for signs and for seasons. The word season there is moed, which is feast. And we're going to be talking about that in the next program. And so God is sending us signals in the skies. And it began in 1949, with, in 1949 and 50 with four blood moons, tetrad, mm -hmm. all on religious holy days. These are uh, uh, lunar eclipses, and they all happened in 1949 and 50, four of them on Jewish Holy Days. The same thing happened in 1967 and 68. The same thing happened in 2014 and 15. And those are all very significant years. Of course, 1949 and 50 is when Israel set up their government. They became a nation in 1948, but they set up their government in 1949 and 50. So these are very significant signs that are unusual. By the way, the time that it happened before then was 1492 and 1493 when Christopher Columbus came to America. And remember, 1492 is when King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella expelled all the Jews out of Spain. Mm -hmm. And so it was very, and they, many people believe that Christopher Columbus was a Jew and he came to America to find a safe haven for the Jews, which he did. That's the safest yeah. place in the world. I've never heard that. For Jewish people. And so, and there were four blood moons, 1492 wow. and 1493. What about in 2014, 2015? Well, the significance to me, Rachel, is the Temple Mount. In 1949 and 50, it was the Holy Land. In 1967 and 68, it was the Holy City. Right. Mm -hmm. In 2014 and 15, it's the Holy Temple. Now, remember, President Trump in 2018, uh, at the 70th anniversary of Israel, he recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Mm -hmm. um, very, very significant. Right. And the next day, the Jewish rabbi said, it's time to build the third temple. And then the next day, the Iran uh, Revolutionary Guard said, it's time to attack Israel. And so it's, everything's heating up over there. And so a lot of people and a lot of politicians are talking about, it's time to rebuild the temple. So I believe in 2014 and 15, something very significant happened that is signaling that something else is going to happen in Israel. Okay. So let me talk about uh, the most significant uh, second most significant end times event in my lifetime, it's the Revelation 12 sign. I can't really believe that this actually happened. 
But this Revelation 12 says a great sign. Okay, this is the only place that we're told it's a great sign. Okay, and what that means is it's very significant concerning the return of Christ. A great sign appeared in heaven. So we know that this is talking about up in the heavens. Mm -hmm. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and 10 horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to the throne, uh, to, to God in his throne. So there's some symbolism here uh, about obviously the male child is Jesus, the woman is Israel or the Jews, uh, the dragon is Satan. So there's imagery, but this actually happened. On September the 23rd, 2017, now the Maseroth, these are, these are the constellations in the heavens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Jews, uh, in, in the oral tradition of the Jews is God taught Adam uh, and Eve the Maseroth. And he showed them all of what the, the stars meant and how to read it. Now, here's, here's something very interesting. So this actually happened. We'll describe it here in just a minute. This, this sign actually happened in the heavens, okay, on September 23rd, uh, 2017. The time it happened before that was 5,934 years ago, about the time Adam and Eve were alive. Wow. So it's possible that when God was teaching Adam and Eve the Maseroth, that this sign was in the heavens, the same sign. So this is a very unusual sign that hadn't happened for about 6,000 years. Oh, wow. So Virgo, it says the woman was clothed with the sun, with the moon at her feet, and a garland of 12 stars. On September the 23rd, 2017, the sun was over Virgo's shoulder, the moon was under her feet, and Leo, the constellation Leo, was over her head, but Venus, Mercury, and Mars, three extra stars, because uh, Leo only has nine stars, three extra stars were above her head, which meant there was a garland of 12 stars above her head. She was clothed with the sun. The moon was under her feet. Now, Jupiter is the king planet. The, the Jews associate uh, Jesus, the Messiah, with Jupiter. Okay, so Jupiter entered into the womb of, if you could see the sign, and we're going to show it there on the screen, if you could see the Virgo, the Virgin, Jupiter entered into the womb of the Virgin on November the 20th, 2016, nine months previous to September 23rd. So it went in there and it retrograded, which nine means months. it just went round and round in the womb for nine months. Wow. It exited on September the 9th of 2017. It so was, retrograde means it just stayed there? It just stayed there. That's what it oh, means. It wow. means it's, it, in our, it appears to us is it's just staying right there. 41 weeks later, the gestation time for a human child. Mm -hmm. 41 weeks later, it comes out. And the, the crazy thing is now, and we're going to show this on the screen, is that after being nine months, Jupiter, the king planet associated with the Messiah, is in the virgin's womb, garland of 12 stars over her head, and under her, between her legs, below the birth canal, is this hideous red object. And you can go on Google Sky. I encourage you to go on Google Sky. Mm -hmm. When you go on Google Sky, their website, at the top right-hand corner, click on infrared. At the bottom of the screen, click on constellations. And then on the very right of the constellations, you'll see Virgo. Click on there, and what you'll see is Virgo. And between her legs, there is a hideous red object that's been redacted. You can still see part of it. And we're going to show the full picture on there. You can still see part of it. It looks like a lion. It looks like a dragon. Wow. It, it, again, it's just absolutely chilling mm. that the, the exact... Revelation 12 sign that has not appeared. And remember, it says the dragon, his tail drew a third of the stars from heaven, which speaks of the angels, the fallen angels. Mm -hmm. When uh -huh. Satan fell, he took a third of the angels with him. But this red hideous thing looks like just a big grouping of hideous objects together. Mm -hmm. And so it's amazing. And so, so I'm going to go back and say this. So we're talking about the last days. We're talking about last times. And I'm not, I am the most un- you know, uh, excitable person in the world. I'm not emotional. Yeah. I, you know, I don't try to get people all riled up. Mm -hmm. These things are real. Th these are actual things that are happening. And God is hanging signs up in the heavens saying, people, wow. 
I'm coming. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said it 2,000 years ago. He, he told us it was going to happen. The signs would be in the heavens. And even when you mentioned about the 12 signs and you're talking about the Jewish rabbis, and we had Marilyn Hickey talking about this, that how the enemy tried to take the signs and use them like for That's horoscopes. Exactly right. That's not what we're talking about. These are, right. these are actual images in the sky that tell the, the, the story of salvation yeah. That's right. in Is the heavens. We have to remember Jesus' yeah. birth, there was an astronomical sign. Right. Yes. Jesus' death on Friday afternoon, mm -hmm. an object blocked the sun mm -hmm. and the sky grew black. So whenever Jesus is, whenever something is happening and, you know, related to Jesus, mm -hmm. there are things happening in the heavens. And so all of these things are shouting to us that Jesus is coming. Yeah. yeah and it says in Psalms that the heavens declare the glory of God. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and in the very beginning, Genesis 1, God made the sun, moon, and stars mm -hmm. for signals mm -hmm. and feasts. And so right. big deal. So, so, so what would this sign, which is so incredibly dramatic, now and specific. play into where we are right now. Well, you have to remember, uh, so when you take, when you go to the first blood moon of 2014, which was on Passover, and the uh, September 23rd of 2017 was two days, uh, two days prior was the Feast of Trumpets. It was a very significant period of time when we were over in Israel mm -hmm. with trumpets. So, there's a, there's a number in the book of Revelation, and it's, in the, it's also in Daniel, that recurs repeatedly. It's 1,260 days. From the first blood moon of 2014 until Passover, and I'm sorry, until the trumpets, uh, before September 23rd was 1,260 days. Very, very significant. And so it's, it's telling us that Jesus is coming. And it also says that he, the dragon chased the woman into the wilderness for 1,260 days. Okay. And so it's, it's very interesting, the signs that are associated, which, which I believe is the rapture. Remember, the male child was caught up, raptured. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that's the church. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the body of Christ. And so there's going to be a rapture associated with the devil. Now, the, another thing I want to talk about is the last days of Satan in heaven. So now I'm going to say this, and I don't know this, but I'm going to say I'm not sure that Satan didn't get thrown out of heaven in 2017, okay? Because Revelation 12 talks about it. The same scripture that was literally fulfilled in 2017. He's definitely been leaving around here. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure of that if you just turn the news on. I mean, it's complete Something, chaos. Something's happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is Revelation 12. Okay, we read the Revelation 12 sign. This right. is the, the continuation of that. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon, by the way, Michael is Israel's angel, okay, oh, wow. uh, archangel. I didn't know that. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and, and the sea for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. Okay, woe, earth, Mm -hmm. Here comes the devil. Now, again, I'm not sure that that didn't happen in 2017 or begin to happen yes. in 2017. Well, you, someone might say, why would, why would God allow Satan in heaven all this time and then throw him out at this time? Well, one reason is he doesn't want him there for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. if, if God was getting heaven ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb, first thing you'd do is kick the devil out. Mm -hmm. The second reason is to judge the earth. Okay, right. the tribulation is judgment on the earth. And I'll tell you, the, the problem with the tribulation, you've got double wrath. The Satan comes down with full of great wrath, knowing that his time is short. Yeah. Now, this is Revelation 6. The kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? So here's the tribulation. You've got a dragon full of wrath, mm -hmm. and you have a lamb full of wrath, and the lamb wins. Yes. Okay? And so the, the lamb is coming with wrath. And I'm going to tell you, 
This is not judgment. The tribulation, because I hear people sometimes saying, well, Christians are going to go through the tribulation. The uh, First Thessalonians says that Jesus delivers us from the wrath to come. He has not yes. appointed us to wrath. Yes. Jesus said, pray that you can escape all these things mm -hmm. and to stand before the Son of Man. The, the tribulation, over half of humanity is killed during the tribulation. The world is a smoldering ruin. All sea life is dead. It, it, every, it's just the world is a smoldering ruin. And Jesus said it would be like the days of Noah and Lot, buying, mm -hmm. selling, marrying, giving in marriage. Uh, and by the way, when Lot, Jesus said it'd be like the days of Lot, God did not tell Lot to get a bunker and get a bunch of food to survive the hellfire and brimstone. <laughs> what God told Lot was, get out. get out. And the angel said, we yeah. can't judge this place until you arrive at your destination. He did the same thing That's for so Noah, That's right? right. Yeah. He took Noah out. Yeah. Okay. So and so it's very important, the, tr the tribulation period of time, any person not saved, you, you need to open your heart to Christ because, uh, by the way, uh, it says in Daniel 7 that the Antichrist will be given authority over the saints to persecute them. Uh, during the tribulation and Revelation 20 says there's an altar of souls who had been beheaded because they would not take the mark of the beast. During the tribulation period, if you're a Christian and you refuse to take the mark of the beast, you're going to be beheaded. You're going to be persecuted. And Jesus says in the uh, book of Revelation, woe to anyone who takes the mark because you will drink of the full wine press, wine, wine press of the wrath of Almighty God. It is an unforgivable sin to take that mark because it's not just taking a mark. It's an, it's an allegiance to rebellion against the Bible. Mm. It, is, it is a moral code or an immoral code that you're succumbing to. And so it's very important. So the, the time of great wrath is coming. And so when you see what's happening in the world right now, Johnny, it's crazy. Yes, there, right. the, the satanic activity in the world today. Mm -hmm. When I started in the yeah. ministry and people would come down for prayer, they'd say, well, I talked bad to my mom yesterday, you know, and I just really feel bad about, you know, my yeah. friend and I. And today they come down to the altar, they'll say, well, I got to kill three people. And, you know, <laughs> exactly. it's just, it's completely it's different. Yeah. Is pe That's people, the, really the level of demonic activity is, mm -hmm. is so bad. So let me talk about one other thing. And it is the prophecy of Samuel ben Judah. And this was a prophecy. He was a 12th century German uh, uh, Jewish rabbi. And he had a prophecy that has come true. It has is, is come true graphically. Now, this, we know that this was in circulation for hundreds of years before it began to come true. And so here's, he used the gematria. You know, the Jews are brilliant people. And the gematria, their letters are their numbers. So a, a Jewish alphabet is also their, the way that they count. Well, they used the gematria to look at astronomical events and historical events. So Samuel ben Judah, based on his calculations, gave this prophecy, um, and this was uh, in the 13th century, 12th, 13th century. Here's his prophecy. When the Ottoman Turks conquered Jerusalem, they will rule over Jerusalem for eight jubilees. Afterward, Jerusalem will become a no man's land for one jubilee. And then in the ninth jubilee, it will once again come back into the possession of the Jewish nation, which was signified the beginning of the Messianic end time. So he gave this prophecy, okay, 300 years later in 1517, the Mamluks who controlled that area of the world, Turkey basically right now in the Middle East, they were conquered by the Ottoman Turks. The Ottoman Turks, remember he said that they will rule it for eight jubilees. Okay, that's 400 years. The jubilees 50 years. Mm -hmm. Exactly 400 years later, in 1917, the Ottoman Turks were conquered by the British. And the British conquered them, and then the Balfour Declaration came out. And the Balfour Declaration said, we're creating a homeland in Palestine for the Jews. And the Jews can move back here now. Okay, for 1917, the League of Nations conferred Jerusalem as an international city. They would not recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. They just said, it's no man's land. Every person has it and nobody has it. Mm -hmm. That changed in 1967. He said one jubilee later, it will be a no man's land for one jubilee. Okay, So that jubilee ended and the ninth jubilee ended in 1967 when Jerusalem became Israel, mm -hmm. uh, unified under Israel. In 2017, the same year as we saw the 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 Revelation 12 sign. In that same year was the end of the 10th Jubilee that he said was the beginning of the Messianic end times. Mm -hmm. This is in the 12th and 13th century, a Jewish rabbi using the gematria said, 
all these things are going to happen, and they happened exactly. But here's why I'm saying it. We're at the end of all that. Right. We're at the very end of the 10th Jubilee of what he said. And, and here's what I believe when I, when I look around, because you, you can hear it and you can see it too. Jerusalem is the issue. Jerusalem is the issue now mm -hmm. that stands with international diplomacy. And we have pressured them to give up the West Bank. We've pressured them to give up the Gaza Strip. We're trying to get them to get up, give up the goal on Heights right now, but President Trump is standing strong that we're not going to give that up. Yeah. But the greatest pressure on the Jews right now is to give up East Jerusalem, is a capital for the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. And they're saying Israel is our eternal, uh, indivisible capital, and we're not going to give it up. The Antichrist makes a covenant with Israel. And when they make that covenant, they rebuild the temple. And the way, reason we know that they rebuild the temple is because 2 Thessalonians says the Antichrist goes into a rebuilt temple and proclaims himself God. Mm -hmm. So we know that there's going to be a, a rebuilt temple, but there's two possibilities. The first possibility is that the Antichrist makes a deal with the Jews and says, let's make a deal. You give up East Jerusalem, we'll give up the Temple Mount. And you can build your you can build your temple up there, mm -hmm. and then you give up East Jerusalem because it does say that the Gentiles trample Jerusalem for uh, three and a half years. Okay, and they trample it when they control it. Okay, the other possibility is this: there'll be two witnesses, who I believe is uh, Enoch and Elijah, because they didn't die. They didn't die, and mm -hmm. they're untouchable. It says they can call down fire from heaven. They can cause the rain to stop anywhere on the earth. Mm -hmm. These guys are untouchable. And I was thinking about this one day. It doesn't matter whether the Antichrist lets them rebuild or not. The two witnesses stand up on the Temple Mount and they say to all the builders, build, we'll protect you. And so mm -hmm. for three and a half, think about this, for three and a half years they build, then they start, or, or however long it takes them, they build, then they start sacrificing animals. Think about PETA. Think about all the people in the world and how politically incorrect it will be for them to be up there sacrificing animals in the ritual sacrifice. And it says that the Antichrist stops the sacrifices. He kills the two witnesses, lays their body in the streets of Jerusalem, and it says the whole world watches it. The whole world can but watch it. The Bible prophesies that. They, but if they're untouchable, then how can they be killed? After three and a half years, he God was, allows the Antichrist allows, to kill yeah. them. Yeah, they're, they're protected for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're on the Temple Mount. They're, they're ministering on the Temple Mount with signs and wonders and preaching the gospel. They will be saying things that the Antichrist in the world absolutely hates. They are so absolutely hated that when they're killed, everybody sends gifts to each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's how you know you're, you're hated. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the two witnesses, you think that's the grace of God that if there's anyone left that would hear the gospel? Yeah, exactly. That plus 144,000. Plus, I was going to say the Jews. Yeah. yeah. The, oh, see, yeah. the gospel began with the Jews. It'll end with the, the Jews. Jews. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, the, but the two witnesses are just, um, they are God's statement to the world. You will not shut me up. Mm -hmm. And, and I, 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 I control things. All right. Well, we are out of time. We can't are believe we really? it. We are out of time. But that was fast. We have to... We have to allow you an opportunity to pray. Yeah. I want That's you to right. do your fastest salvation prayer, but it's just as sincere and real as if you took a long time. Okay. Pray with me. So, Jesus, Jesus. I open my heart to you. I open my heart to you. And I invite you to come in. I invite you to come in. To be my Lord and Savior. To be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. And give me the gift of eternal life. And give me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I, some of you, I really sense you needed, you wanted to pray that prayer. And as we're sitting here, do any of y'all want to go through the tribulation? I mean, we're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Marriage supper of the so Lamb. So I'm just telling you, Jesus gave us provision. Yes. I mean, God did yes. through his son. And uh, I tell you what, it's a new day for you. And, and, and we're not telling you this stuff for you to be fearful, but at the same time to have a reverential fear and understanding yes. of, the word of, of the Word of God of what is to come. Mm -hmm. Well, before we go, I want you to know that you, again, don't have to be afraid of the current state of our world or even future events. Guess what? God is still in control. Remember to focus on all the amazing things He has in store for us as believers from sin and suffering ceasing to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Possible to know the time and season Jesus will return and what end times mysteries are hidden within the Jewish Holy Feast. Well, today's special guest is here to answer those questions and more. It's going to be really good. You want to stay right there. But first, join me is Rachel Lamb Brown. 
Oh, I don't think we say anything on these shows. We like listen the whole time. Don't no, we? but it's so good. That's how you know it's like really, really good. Yeah, I bet people at home are watching, listening too. Yeah, absolutely. Get and a I'm cup really, of coffee, a cup of tea. Yeah, and, and I'm down. excited because yeah. we're going to talk about the Jewish feast today, and yeah. I think there's a lot more to learn about those. And For I sure. got married on one of these feasts. So That's right. I like you did. Dorothy Newton, how are you? I'm doing great. I don't think we had a peep out of oh, this side the no, whole last show. No, no, when the teacher is here, I just want to listen and learn. <laughs> good, yeah. Rebecca Lamb, Weiss, how are you? I'm great. Good, good. I know you're interested in the feast as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I know uh, some of this just like kind of light you up because you're married to someone who's Jewish and you've already learned so much about all of this. Absolutely, and there's just, there's so much richness that comes when you understand the biblically appointed feasts. Yeah. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm doing great. And, Good. and you know, I'm thinking about souls. Yeah. All of this should really drive us yeah. to get the message of the gospel to yeah. the lost. I'm thinking about that Crystal Lewis song, people get ready, Jesus, Jesus is coming, <laughs> soon we'll be going home. Yes. All right. Jimmy Evans, welcome. Good to be here. Back Thank to the you. table. To the table. We're going to be talking about, um, actually, are the, the last three feasts of The last Israel? three feasts. There are seven feasts in all. We're going to okay. talk about the last three. Okay. And so if you can recap for those who didn't see yesterday's program, like, in one minute, kind of what we talked about, and then why we're going into this part. Well, we're talk we talked about the Revelation 12 sign, the signs in the sun, moon, and stars, the blood moons, uh, and all of that. Uh, the Revelation 12 sign of the woman clothed with the sun, moon at her feet, garland of 12 stars over her head, that actually happened September the 23rd of 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, every detail. But it's pointing, again, Jesus said, there's gonna be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Well, all three happened during that September 23rd event. Oh, wow. And so in the events that come after that that you talk about are yeah. the rapture of the church. The rapture yeah. of the church, the yes. The feast. Yeah, this the next big thing that's going to happen. I want to talk about the feast because mm -hmm. I want to talk about the Feast of Trumpets. Because so this is Le Leviticus 23. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. Well, the word feast is the word moed in the Hebrew, and it just means an appointed festival. Mm -hmm. It just means you're going to come together, mm -hmm. you're going to have festival. But the word convocation means dress rehearsal. Mm. Oh, wow. You're going to come together, and you're going to have a dress rehearsal. Okay. And there were seven feasts. There were four spring feasts, mm -hmm. okay, and three fall feasts. Okay. Mm -hmm. And seven is the number of perfect, perfection. Okay. And they are a prophetic grid. They're showing us the future in, in advance mm -hmm. and how it's going to happen. Okay, let me give you an example. So if they were dress rehearsals, there was a Passover. This was the first feast. In Passover, it was the death angel was coming, and they were told to take a spotless male lamb and to kill that lamb yeah. and to take the blood of that lamb. Of course, they had to eat it uh, in, in haste because they were about to be delivered. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> Jesus came to deliver us. And they had to take the blood of that lamb and put it on the lintel of their house, and by the way, it would have made a cross. Mm -hmm. The way right. they put that blood on their right. doorpost it would have made a cross. They had to put the blood, and then when the death angel came that night, the death angel passed over, mm -hmm. but killed all the Egyptian children, okay? Yeah. And then they immediately were set, set loose by, uh, where they were released by Pharaoh, okay? So Jesus died during the Feast of Passover as all of Israel was bringing their lambs to the temple to be sacrificed, or they were sacrificing their lambs, Jesus was dying on the cross at that exact moment, okay? So the dress rehearsal mm. actually had a fulfillment yeah. 2,000 years ago, okay? So the day after that was the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? Unleavened Bread, they had to eat it for seven days, and leaven represents sin. You say, well, why would they have to eat unleavened bread for seven days? Because Jesus perfectly cleansed us from all sin. He was the perfect sacrifice for sin. Yeah. And so the unleavened bread represented the perfect sacrifice of yep. Jesus to remove sin. Okay, so the day after uh, was the Feast of, of first fruits, And they took the barley harvest or the wheat harvest and they would wave it before God. Okay, Jesus was resurrected on first fruits, And 1 Corinthians 15 mm -hmm. said he's the first fruits of many brethren. In other words, the way Jesus was resurrected, we're also going to get new bodies and be resurrected. Okay. 50 days later after that was the Feast of Pentecost. Pentecost, 50 is fullness. 50 is freedom. OK, 
okay, 50 is Jubilee. Redemption. 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 Fulfilled. So 50 days later, exactly on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and the church was birthed. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes. Freedom, fullness, yes. redemption. Yes. Wow. And that's Shavuot. That's right, Shavuot. So uh, everything, so, so go back, go back now and say, in a matter of 50, uh, 53 days, basically, you had the first four feasts exactly, literally fulfilled. Oh, wow. Now you know the next three will be also. So what happened between Pentecost and the fall feast? Harvest. They planted and they harvested. Yeah. Okay, what are we doing? What is the church doing in the interim of Pentecost and trumpets, which is the next feast? We're harvesting. 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 That's right. We're harvesting right now. That's yeah. right. And we're yeah. going to be called out of the harvest. Yeah. When, when Jesus comes, he's going to call us out of the harvest. So there's three more feasts coming, and, and let me talk about what I believe these represent. The trumpets is the rapture. Now, and by the way, they happen in order. They have to happen in order, okay? So it's not gonna be that, you know, atonement happens and then this happens. It's, it's gonna be trumpets happens next. Very significant. We're gonna talk about detail in that. This, so the next feast is the Feast of Atonement. This is 10 days after trumpets, and these were the days of awe. This was the holiest day in Israel, and this is when they sacrificed a goat and took it, this is the only day of the year where the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies mm -hmm. and he would take the blood of that goat and pour it on the, the mercy seat mm -hmm. for, the, for the atonement of the children of Israel. And by the way, it was a day of fasting. It was a day of, it was a day of afflicting your soul. This wasn't, this wasn't a, a good day. This was and it was a, a day of repentance, right? Too? Day of repentance. Remembering all your sins That's and exactly stuff. right. Then they took another goat and the high priest pronounced all the sins of Israel on yeah. that goat. It was the scapegoat. Right. And we and use a, that phrase to this day. That's where it comes from. And we find scapegoats all the time. Mm, yeah. yeah. We, we find somebody <laughs> to put all of our sins on. Yeah. And so, but a suitable man would take that goat out into the distance. Jesus died outside the city. Yep. And Hebrews says, let's go out to him Side outside the, the camp. Okay, mm -hmm. so he took our shame. The mm -hmm. scapegoat took the sin and the shame and he took it outside the camp, meaning wow. it's gone. So the, then after that, on the 15th to the 22nd day, it was a seven-day feast. Remember, seven represents perfection. There was the Feast of Tabernacles where they built booths, little temporary shelters that they mm -hmm. put palm branches and things on, mm -hmm. representing when they came out of the wilderness, when they were uh, with God in the wilderness, but representing eternity with God, that we will live uh, after Jesus comes. And by the way, the Feast of Atonement is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rapture, one day the second coming, one day. Mm -hmm. Jesus comes back and he cleanses the world of sin. He throws the uh, Satan into the bottomless pit, the false prophet and the uh, Antichrist, he throws them into the lake of fire and Jesus comes and he cleanses the earth. Okay, then we spend eternity with God. So we have three more feasts that will be fulfilled. When the last feast is fulfilled, human history is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And God did this in the Old Testament. God said, here's my prophetic grid. Every time you do one of these feasts, you're, you're actually going through a dress rehearsal yeah. of the real things can happen. Oh, so wow. I, it's I like want, a wedding. Yeah, exactly. So it's the Feast of Trumpets. Uh, why, why is the Feast of Trumpets uh, connected to the rapture? Well, let me read a few scriptures here. 1 Thessalonians 4. This is the most graphic description of the rapture in the, in the Bible. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's the Greek word harpazo, it's the Latin word repere, or raptus, where we get our word rapture. So sometimes people will say, well, rapture's not in the Bible. It is if you have a Latin Bible. Yeah. Okay. And then we, we who are alive will be caught up with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. This is important when it says we will meet them in the air, okay, mm -hmm. because the second coming happens at the Mount of Olives. Mm -hmm. When Jesus ascended from the earth 10 mm -hmm. days before Pentecost, when he ascended, the angel stood there and said, what are you looking at? He's going to come back just the way he left. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and so, so the second coming is a physical coming. Every eye will see him. Mm -hmm. The rapture is a private event between Jesus and the church that happens up in the air. 1 Corinthians 15. Now I say this, brethren, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twink twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. 
For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Then this is Revelation 4. 4. Now, Revelation 2 and 3 are Jesus' letters to the seven churches. Seven is perfection. So the seven churches represent the church age. Okay. Mm -hmm. Revelation 4, 1, here's what he says. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet Mm -hmm. speaking to me, saying, come up here. I will show you things which must take place after this. And so uh, many theologians and Bible scholars believe that's the rapture of the church. The Revelation 2 and 3 are Jesus' letters to the seven churches representing the church age. We're the church of Laodicea, lukewarm, uh, the church in the world right now, lukewarm. We think we're something we're not. Mm. And, then, uh, and then the rapture occurs. Now, so some would say, well, the trumpet that is talked about here, these are the judgment trumpets in the book of Revelation. No, they're not. Those are judgment trumpets. This is a good thing. And I'm going to talk about all the names of the Feast of Trumpets here in just a minute. Okay, so when you say to, the, to a Jew, okay, uh, the last trump, okay, to a, uh, I'm not talking about a Christian Jew, the last trump, they know what that means. That means mm-hmm. the Feast of Trumpets. Mm-hmm. The Feast of Trumpets is a two-day feast that happens in the seventh month, okay, after the new moon. It's a two-day feast because they had to, get the new, they had to find the new moon. And they had to communicate that to all the Jews that were everywhere. And so they they took it over a two-day period of time. And so the Feast of Trumpets is known as the day which no one knows. Mm. When Jesus said, when Jesus said, you'll not know the day or the hour, if I told you, Dorothy, Jesus is coming next Feast of Trumpets, you would not know the day or the hour. See? Even though it's two days. Yeah, it, it could be either day. Is that because okay. they're waiting for the new moon? or They're waiting for the new moon. They had to find, they had to be a couple of witnesses that found mm-hmm. the new moon. They then went to the Sanhedrin, the council, and they reported to them. They then declared it as a holy convocation, mm-hmm. and they would go out and communicate. They'd have to build fires on the top of the mountains and let everybody know, hey, it's, it's, it's happening. And they, with fires on the top of the mountains, they could communicate for thousands of miles in a pretty quick period right. of time. But they gave it to, because they had to find it and communicate right. it. So they gave it two days. So it's the day that no one knows. So the, the Feast of Trumpets, there are a hundred trumpet blasts. There are four mm-hmm. different types of trumpet blasts that take place during the Feast of Trumpets. But there's one final blast. That's mm-hmm. called the last trumpet. Okay, mm-hmm. and when that last trumpet blows, every Jew know that's that's the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, yeah. so it this is the the Feast of Trumpets is the rapture of the church. Let me talk about some of the names of the Feast of Trumpets. Rosh Hashanah is called mm-hmm. the head of the year, uh, the beginning of the year. This is uh, year fifty seven eighty, and so it we we begin a new year. Uh, uh, Yom Teruah, which means the day of blowing, it means the day of the awakening blast. Remember what Paul said, the dead in Christ will rise first. Mm -hmm. They literally, when the trumpet is blown, the dead awaken, okay? That's a different trumpet sound. That's That's right. That's that's the last one. That's a different trumpet sound. It's it's the longest of everything. The other trumpet blasts are are different lengths, but the last trump is about 10 seconds long. It's as long as the trumpet blower can blow, and that's the last trumpet. It's the longest one. It's the biggest one. 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. It's the day of the awakening blast, okay? 1 Corinthians 4, 6, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first, okay? And the first Thessalonians 4, 16. It's called Yom Hadin, which refers to the day of judgment. This is 2 Corinthians 5, 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Now, the judgment of unbelievers is the great white throne judgment. Okay, mm-hmm. At the end of the millennium, the, it, it, when we meet Jesus, our judgment is when we meet him. This is what Revelation 22 says. And behold, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me. The judgment of Jesus is a judgment of rewards. It's not a judgment of punishments. It, to give everyone according to his work, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and end, the first and the last. So we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And Jesus said, my, my reward is with me. So when we're raptured at that time, we enter into our reward. 
we are judged, it's a good judgment. The, the great white throne judgment, you don't want to be there. It's not a good judgment. Yeah. Okay, but at the, at the judgment seat of Christ, it is. It's called Yom Zikaron, which means the day of remembrance. Remember, the rapture is selective. Okay, mm -hmm. this, this is a day that God remembers his people. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, two men will be standing in a field. One will be taken, one will be left. If you're a believer, you will be remembered on that day. Mm -hmm. It's called the wedding day of the Messiah. The, the Feast of Trumpets is known, and this is the oral tradition, by the way, of the Jews. And you have to remember, they've, they've kept these feasts for thousands of years. And so the wedding day of the Messiah is also called Hamalek, which is the season of the coronation of the king. Revelation 19 is the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then it says that Jesus is on a white stallion. We're returning with him, and it says he has a name written on his thigh the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now, this is the one that I love, the and next that's one. That's the second coming when he's that, on the white horse. That's exactly yes. right. And we, we're with him there. And Zechariah right. 14 says the same thing. Yeah. They're, they're mirror of the So eternity. you're saying the rapture of the church. Right. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Right. The second coming. Right. Thousand year reign. Right, exactly. Um, it's called the, trumpets is called the day of concealment. Okay, now this is very, very interesting. So if you remember, our bridegroom is coming for us. And in Matthew 25, one of the parables Jesus told about the second coming was the 10 virgins, mm -hmm. okay? And they were preparing for the return of the bridegroom. Right. So the bridegroom is returning. So this is the interesting thing because if you're, if you're waiting on Jesus, the day of concealment, okay? Mm -hmm. um, in a Jewish wedding, the, the uh, husband would come pay the price mm -hmm. for the bride and over a glass of wine, they made a contract, a marriage contract, and then they were betrothed, okay? Now they didn't uh, consummate that for a while. And the young man, but they were legally betrothed. Mm -hmm. And the young man would go back to his father's house. Jesus, John 14, I'm going to my father's house. Prepare a mansion for you. The young man would go to his father's house and prepare a, a bridal mm -hmm. chamber, a, a house for his bride. He did not know when he was coming back. He had to have his father's permission. Jesus said, I don't know the day or the hour. Only my father knows. So Jesus, right now he's at the father's house preparing a place for us. And then the father, it, when everything's ready, the father says, go get your bride. So about midnight, there'd be a wedding party and they would come through the streets blowing trumpets mm -hmm. and shouting, making a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. And the bride had to have some makeup on evidently. You know, she, <laughs> she, she couldn't have cold cream in and curlers and stuff. She, she didn't know when it was coming. So, but they would come through the streets unannounced and there would be friends of the bridegroom that, that came with him. And he would take his bride back to his father's house and they would go into the chuppah, the bridal chamber for seven days. And they, stayed, they were concealed there for seven days. And they consummated their marriage. They came out of the chuppah, and he then presented his bride to all the guests, and they had the marriage supper of, uh, of right there. Okay, so in Revelation, the church appears uh, constantly for the first, in, in the first three chapters. Um, a little bit the, in, in chapter four or five, the tribulation chapters of Revelation are Revelation 6 to Revelation 18. The church is absent. But we appear mm -hmm. in Revelation chapter 19 mm -hmm. after being concealed for seven years. Wow. Mm -hmm. During the seven-year tribulation, we are alone consummating our marriage. By the way, we're called the bride of Christ before. In Revelation 19, we're called the wife of Christ. Mm -hmm. So our marriage has been consummated, but we have been concealed. That's when you read the... See, when people say that Christians are going to go through the tribulation, now there'll be saints in the tribulation. Those yeah. are people getting saved. Right. But the church is never mentioned. There will be the, martyrs in the seven years. Absolutely, yeah. big, big time. But the, but the church is never mentioned. Now, this is Revelation 19. Let, let me read it to you. It says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready, and it was granted to her to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, write, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are true sayings of God. In other words, this is gonna happen, okay? This is verse 11. I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, this is us, remember we were fine mm -hmm. linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, 
that with it he should strike the nations. He kills the Antichrist, by the way, with this. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Well, I want you to think about something for just a minute. Okay, so down here on the earth is Jerusalem. Armageddon, the, the last scene of human history, is the second coming when Jesus with the church comes to Jerusalem, slays the Antichrist, mm -hmm. the false prophet, and, the, and throws Satan in the lake of fire and kills all the armies, okay? I want you to think about the scene. We're looking over Jesus' shoulder. Mm -hmm. we, we are also on white horses. We're coming down, and Jesus, I'm glad Jesus is gonna be at the front yes. of the pack. That's really yeah. gonna be helpful, <laughs> yes. you know? Yes. But we are His coming, eyes were of fire think, of, think of the view that you're going wow. to have. We are, we are going to sit there and watch Jesus kill the Antichrist, the false prophets, and all the armies that have come to destroy the Jews in, in uh, Jerusalem. Mm. And we're gonna watch him throw the devil into the lake of fire and set up his throne on the Temple Mount. We're gonna watch that. That's amazing. Mm. Can you imagine? Amazing. <laughs> yeah. So the Feast of Trumpets, the Rapture, the Feast of Atonement, is second judgment. The second it's coming. It's judgment. Uh -huh. And the Feast of Tabernacles. And, and by the way, Revelation 19 that I just read, that is the, that is the Feast of Atonement. Wow. When we come back with Jesus, that will be on the Day of Atonement. And, and is that the great white throne judgment? No. So what you have is you have okay. the Day of Atonement. Five days later, there's the seven-day Feast mm -hmm. of, of Tabernacles. Mm -hmm. That represents eternity, eternity with God. Eternity, yeah. Mm -hmm. We, we rule and reign on the earth with Jesus for a thousand years. And by the way, Zechariah uh, chapters 12 through 14 mirror all of this. Oh, really? Oh, yes. It's, it's amazing. It talks about the millennium. It talks about the second coming. Uh, it says all the saints come back with him. Wow. Okay. And so the, there's a thousand years that we rule. Now, I want to, there, in Revelation, it says in one place in Revelation that the people sought death and it escaped them. Mm -hmm. So... One of the judgments of the tribulation is, not everyone, but there will be a group of people who God does not allow to die. And there will be many, many people, I don't know how many, but probably billions of people still alive after the tribulation. They survived the tribulation, okay? Because mm -hmm. God wouldn't die. We rule them for a thousand years, but they don't get saved. At the, at the end of a thousand year rule of Jesus, they try to kill Jesus. It says that Satan is released from the bottomless pit at the end of the thousand years, he goes to deceive Gog and Magog, the nations. That's an idiom for nations in rebellion. This is his last run, by the way. This is his last run. <laughs> this this is his last yeah. hoorah. Yeah. And he goes and deceives the nations, and they march against the city of the saints and Jesus, and they try to kill us and him. Mm. And that's when Jesus throws them into the lake of fire. There's the great white throne judgment. Their, their judge, Satan, is thrown into the lake of fire. He's gone forever. Mm -hmm. The heavens and the earth are destroyed. New heavens and new earth are created. And the new Jerusalem comes down out of, the, out of uh, heaven. And, and interestingly, the new Jerusalem is uh, 12, 1,280 mile cube. It's uh, wide, tall, and long, all the same. Um, that's where we have the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's the Father's house. And so when you hear of someone who dies and goes to heaven and they see the streets of gold and all that, that's, that they went to the Father's house. Yeah, we've interviewed many people that have gone there and talked about the yep. sight, the sound, the beauty. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the, here's, here's the thing I love. We'll be there for seven years. See, uh, at the end of the thousand years, and I'm not sure during the millennium, we don't have access to it. Mm -hmm. See, during the millennium, when we're ruling and reigning with Christ, because mm -hmm. you can travel at the speed of thought, you know, it, during that time. Uh, we have supernatural bodies. And so it could be that we're down here for eight or 10 hours a day, and then we, the rest of the time we're up there. But the marriage supper of the Lamb takes place in the Father's house, which is the most spectacular place mm. in the whole world. And we'll be there with Jesus. We become his wife. We come with him. We have new bodies. We're, we're, we're supernatural. We're, we can sit down and eat and then walk through a wall like Jesus did. Yeah, glorified so, bodies. Glorified yeah. bodies. Yeah. So and all of this, as far as we know, is about to happen. But the next feast absolutely is the Feast of Trumpets. All right. Well, you know, so interesting. It goes by just like this, mm. but uh, again, you do have that website people can get information on. Yeah, endtimes.com, I do blogs and I do podcasts, but a lot of this information is on there, and I'm writing new blogs and doing no, new podcasts all the time. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, endtimes.com is really good. You know, one of the reasons we, we talk about this is, again, to help you to understand that the Word of God 
yes. has prepared all of us. The Bible tells us all this is going to happen, right. so we, we're not caught off guard. But there, if there's someone watching today and you don't know the Lord, you've never actually prayed the prayer of salvation, we want to give you that opportunity right now. So, Jimmy, if you would do that before we leave the show today. Sure. Um, I tell you, this is the most important decision yes. that you can make yeah. because yes. it's preparing you for eternity. So um, it's no accident that you're watching. I know you're like, well, I can't believe this woman's talking to me, but I feel like she's talking to me. Yes, I'm talking to you. So listen, because this is a God moment for you right now. Pray with me. Say, so Jesus. Jesus. I open my heart to you. I open my heart to you. And I invite you to come in. I invite, I invite you, to you to come in. To be my Lord and Savior. To be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all of my sins. Forgive me of all of my sins. And give me the gift of eternal life. And give me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's just that simple. It is. It is that simple. It's that simple and your life can be yes. transformed by your praying etern that Your prayer. eternity is, is changed mm. yes. forever. Amen. Well, Romans 8, 38 declares that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, even in these last days. God is still God. Yes. He will be with his children right up until the very end of days. And when the end does come, we get to go have the most amazing celebration with Jesus in heaven. That's what we were talking about, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then we come to rule the earth with him. So why, do you, why are you telling me this, Johnny? Because I want you to be at peace knowing you have nothing to fear when it comes to the end times. If you're